Meghan Markle. Welcome. Thank you. So excited to be here. We are back with actress and now newly appointed foodie oh, because Meghan Markle is here and she's going to go to work in our kitchen and she's going to show us how to make meatless tacos for our Taco Tuesday night right. soiree. Yeah, and I have to say it smells absolutely delicious and you're using all these wonderful healthy ingredients which I'm sure the good doctor will approve of. Two and thumbs up. Up. I got two thumbs up from him, so this is great. And how do we get started with this? Off to a good start. Okay. We uh, are going to just saute a little bit of chopped red onions in the pan, use coconut oil or a little bit of olive oil to start with. I love using coconut oil, by the Why? way. The Why do doctor you will it? attest to it. Yes, explain to us the, the health benefits of um, coconut oil. You know, to my understanding, it helps to lower your cholesterol, some other ones. It's also <laughs> great. Compared with cooking olive oil, you can't cook it at a high temperature, otherwise it goes rancid, it gets bad. Right. Coconut oil is great for that. Yeah, it's anything at a high temperature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so burn. we're going to use it also for these peppers later, but we're going to add some garlic, uh, just chopped garlic right in there. And then, to get this up yeah, a, a couple other seasoning blends, some oregano, some cumin. You probably have these in your cupboard. Most yeah. people have these things, I think. Toss some of that in there. I think the cumin, I go a little heavy-handed on it, to be yeah. honest. Right. Because it's a, it has a great flavor. It really it. does, just, a nice smokiness. Yeah. Um, and then salt and pepper, the usual suspects. <laughs> Here we go. Smoking no, like a true right? Like there we go. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we like things really spicy in our house, do you guys? Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm in the kitchen today for the latest edition of Cooking with Flair, the series where we cook the runway. And today I'm cooking with Meghan Markle, the star of the hit TV show Suits and the founder of the lifestyle blog The Pig. So today we're making toast, a very fancy version of toast. <laughs> yes, but it doesn't have to feel overwhelming. Like fancy, I think sometimes people feel like that's really daunting, but it's not. It's just trying to find a way to add an extra twist to make something that's ordinary a little bit more extraordinary. So it's pretty simple. We would start with like a great country bread or seeded bread. We can toast that if you want to pop that in there. It is inspired by my grandma's apple butter recipe, which I have just tweaked a little bit and modernized. So tell me about the tag. It's a very different kind of lifestyle blog. Thank you. Uh, I started about a year and a half ago and I wanted to have just a hub for a really inspired lifestyle from fashion, travel, beauty, great TIG talks that I do with uh, celebrities and influencers. All right, so it looks like our toast is ready. Can you grab that for me? We can start putting this together. I like to start with the apple butter, but we could do it either way. I just took some ricotta, blend in a little bit of lemon juice, a little lemon zest, and some crunchy Marcona almonds. So what are your feelings about pajama dressing? I love it. It sort of speaks to that California relaxed feeling that I've grown up with just taken up to a really chic level. So the idea of doing like a silk pajama blouse, even with your monogram on the side, right? With like great jeans or that with a blazer. The whole look, I think, um, if you can pull it off and no one's gonna say that you actually look like you should still be in bed, go for it. Cheers. Cheers. Toast with our toast. It's really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Tig, Megan, nice to see you. Nice Welcome to see you back. Too. Thank you. We're making something unusual here. People don't think of this. We're talking about salad on the grill. That's right. Let's start with the. Sh well, here's the ingredient panel. What do we it, need to know? So really simple. I mean, we're just talking about we're gonna do a nice grilled romaine salad with grilled shrimp on it. So we have Italian seasoning, crushed red chili flakes, honey. You can do any sort of dressing you want, Caesar, whatever else. So we'll start with just marinating the shrimp, which okay. is really easy. Toss your shrimp in there. A little bit of olive oil. Do some lemon, you can put some salt in there, all of our seasonings here. How long in advance do you do this? You can do it an hour in advance, and you definitely want to put it in the fridge, just let it sort of marinate for a bit. But again, you just want to infuse that flavor in there. Really simple. Before you add Growing up, your fondest memories, at least for me, are in the kitchen. Fortunately, the yogurt sauce didn't really fit with everything else that we had going on on the plate. But I will say, I really enjoyed eating your food. This dish reminded me of the kind of food that I grew up eating in California, like that real sort of farm to table, fresh, really simple ingredients. That was my goal there. Macy Boosin won. I just remember thinking, oh my God, she's really pretty. She was just like a really positive person. Like she wasn't like intimidating or scary at all. There is like a little bit of an art to the slurping of it too, right? Oh yeah, just get close to the bowl, slurp it. There you go. That's good. That's good. Mm. <laughs> 
So I am obsessed with food. But as an actor constantly on the go, for me to get to sit down and enjoy lunch at some of the best restaurants is a rare treat. And even better, to do it with some of the best chefs in New York. Jeff Lloyd, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm glad for you to be here. It's such an institution in New York. I feel like it's one of the best power lunch spots. I mean, what would you tell people that you're known for here? Uh, definitely ramen. It's the classic Ipudo ramen. You can get it at any Ipudo in the world, and the taste will be very much the same. You ready to learn how to make ramen? Yes, yes, yeah. please. First, we set up the bowl with the pate, it's like the flavor base. This is another secret recipe. Now we just cook the noodles and then assemble. What you want to do is put one or two pieces of that cabbage okay. right there in the center. Okay, grab a scoop of the scallions. How's there that? You go. Perfect. Right on top. On the left side. Of, oh my yeah. goodness! I love that there's a specific place that everything goes. Okay, great. And then this is the kikurage, or it's called wood ear mushroom. Kikurage. So just grab a little bit. Next, we're going to do some of our pork belly chashu. So just want two pieces. Okay. And you can put it in the front. Yeah. This is the umami paste. Yes. So This I love. Yeah. So, yeah. I love that umami flavor. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, it's amazing. It mm -hmm. looks like it would be really spicy, but it's not. It's, it's not, really yeah. just that umami flavor. Yeah, it's, right and it's also a color. Yeah, right in the middle. Okay. Right. In, so that, that's the focal point in the center. This is the garlic oil. It just yeah, scoop liquid. it, yep, and okay. then put it right there in the left side. All Perfect. Right. There you go. That's your first bowl of akamata. Yeah, yeah. just that umami flavor. Yeah, it's, right and here it's in the also middle? color. Yeah, right in the middle. Okay. Right. In, so that that's the focal point in the center. This is the garlic oil. It just yeah, scoop liquid. it, yep, okay. and then put it right there in the left side. Perfect. All right. There you go. That's your first bowl of akamata. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited. My first ramen that I've ever made, right here at Ipudo. <laughs> I'm amazed by how fast it is to make it. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, everything takes a long time to prep. Like, for instance, the soup will take two days to sure. make. So that's why when we make it online, it's just ready to be assembled. Yeah, so. and the assemblies, that quick turnaround so you can have a really fast power lunch and be in and out of here. Exactly. Yeah, it's amazing. Exactly. I almost feel like when you have something like this, it's like a hug in a bowl. It's just like, oh, that's a perfect that's, so good. that's a perfect description for it, right? It's great. <laughs> and then the pork buns, I mean, come on, obviously all of this is amazing. I work on a show called Suits, so I have to ask, when you see these power lunches happening, do any of them look like they're lawyers? Uh, you know, some, some do. do. They? Some do, some they have their suits, you know, they look you know, down, they want to get down to business. Why do you think ramen is so popular? Because everybody grew up with the instant ramen. Yeah. The, the, to, to see it in its original form, mm -hmm. I think, is uh, definitely an uh, attraction to it. And plus, uh, it can come in so many different styles. Chef Lloyd, I can't thank you enough for having me, for teaching me how to make this. I can't wait to impress my friends and show them how to do it as well. <laughs> um, and I can't wait to come back, so I really appreciate it. Thank you. Can I keep eating? Oh, absolutely. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs>there and competitors came from another plane company and saw the plane there and started to put theirs. Oh my goodness. And that's how it started and now, you know, we have uh, hundreds. And so today, I know we're going to learn how to make one of your classic dishes that I think is probably one of the most popular I've heard for lunch. Okay, so this is kind of my signature dish that became a 21 signature dish for lunch, chicken paella. The secret with the eggs is that it kind of tenderizes the chicken. We're going to dip it in uh, panko breadcrumbs and parmesan cheese like this. So you want to make sure you do this before you pan out the chicken. To break down a piece of chicken like this, you want to start with a big size. Then you want to, you want to go with the thinner side. <laughs> Just going to back away yeah. from the pounding the field, of the chicken. So what we do here, why the chicken paella looks so beautiful, mm. is that we take the size of the inside of the plate yes. and we cut out the paella. 
expand it out so it cooks quick. You want to let it crisp up a little bit. We're going to use arugula. It's a little bit on the bitter side. Yeah, I love the pepperiness and of arugula. They, they are organic from the chef's garden, which is in the, in the Midwest. A little bit of fin herbs, a little bit of lemon vinaigrette. Great for the spring. I love this too because it's a really healthy dish. The salad makes it nice and uh, people appreciate that actually. Of course. A little bit of truffle oil. This is my secret weapon. Try to make a nice little nest mm -hmm. so it fits uh, perfectly in the center of the plate. See, everything has to be a little bit on the fancier side here. So even a traditional chicken paella has to look beautiful. It's a perfect lunch dish because mm -hmm. I, I like protein in the middle of the day. Mm -hmm. I like a little a little decadence. This is the kind of restaurant that when we started the show, we would have had a giant debate about. Why? Well, um, Kevin, our, Kevin good, Bray. Our, our good friend who directed the pilot, yep. had a very specific idea for the aesthetic of the show, which is what you generally see, the glass and steel, mm -hmm. sort of modern midtown New York. And so in the pilot, we stayed away from old New York. Do you think you could also get the chef to show us the secret wine cellar? Yes. <laughs> has to be done. Do you know the story behind this thing? Yeah, it was a speakeasy when it, it first speakeasy. opened. It was a speakeasy, and I don't know exactly where it exists on the premises, but technically the wine cellar itself is at a different address. So this is that I didn't this know. is 21, and the wine cellar was, I think, at 19, and the idea behind that was if somebody walked in and said, is there liquor on the premises, they could look at them with a straight face and say, no, there isn't. Oh my gosh. How do you know that? I read. <laughs> Thank you, Gene. <laughs> Together is a cookbook, but it's also the story of a West London community who gathered together in a kitchen and discovered the healing power of sharing food. Cooking for me is everything. I love to see people gathering on my table. I love to cook. I love to feed people. In January 2018, as I was settling into my new home of London, I met a group of women whose community had been affected by the Grenfell fire. They had decided to get together to cook fresh food for their families and their neighbors. After the fire, it was somewhere where they could make food to take back to a hotel room where you don't have facilities to cook. It was sort of comforting to be able to do that and, and the kitchen gave them the opportunity to do it. It was quite nice to have that sense of belonging, feel comfortable. And so, for two days every week, these women were able to cook and share their delicious recipes together. We've called the kitchen the Hub Community Kitchen because in Arabic, Hub means love, and we share love. It's like one family now we are, sharing food, sharing happiness, sadness, everything. I think food can bring back memories, and even the smell of food can bring back childhood comfort. I immediately felt connected to this community kitchen. Like these women, I'm passionate about food and cooking as a way of strengthening communities. She asked me, how many days do you offer this service? And I said, two days a week. And her straight question was, why not seven days, Zahira? And I said, one ding. So she goes, we can do a cookbook. We sit together, we eat together, we enjoy the time together. Never mind where are you from, which color you are, which, which language you talk is, is something amazing. So I'm proud to be supporting this cookbook, Together, which features delicious recipes from the women of the Hub community.